Hi everybody, hope you're having a good day out there. Uh, today we are going to talk about my system that I've created for collecting behavior data. It collects it on a school-wide level, but it can also be used for collecting individual data. Um, it uses Google Apps for Education, uh, using Google Forms, Google Sheets, and Google Sites. You can use it if your school division hasn't used Google Apps for Education, but there's just some privacy concerns with regards to that. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. So, uh, the way it works is each staff member will have access to this form and whenever they have to send a student to the office or record some sort of behavior event, they'll fill out one copy of this form and then they'll hit that submit button. Just like any Google form, it goes into a spreadsheet of responses. So this is just an example of all the uh, responses. I just put in totally random stuff here. You'll notice I took out any school names. Um, it's confidential in that regard. And, uh, I've set up, because it is on a spreadsheet, some ways where I can collaborate this data automatically on a universal scale. And also, uh, I've created a Google site, which will allow you to dig a little bit deeper as an administrator. So we'll quickly go through this right now. So to do this, uh, we'll fill out a sample form. So supervisor initials code, date, Student, I'm going to do Tom Smith, something like that. All right, I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to fill this out, and we'll meet you when I come back. Okay, so I just filled out this um, behavior log. It's just a sample one. So it was me on this date. Uh, it was filling out regarding this boy, Tom Smith, in grade two. You'll notice that K equals zero gives you an average grade. This is the check if unsure of name or grade. I'll explain what that means in a minute. Um, but if it's a playground supervisor, you don't know the kid's name or grade for sure, you can click on that tab a time of day, people involved, you can click on, um, I picked other students, happened on the playground, the triggers and antecedents. Uh, it was a transition to another task within a class or it could be you know, within an activity and the social situation went poorly, a refusal to complete task, swearing, profanity, um, and it could just be uh, physical aggression towards peers. What was the consequence? You'll see unintended imposed, so I have some imposed consequences like return to the classroom office for a problem solving sheet and then some unintended ones that we talked about before uh, access desired activities avoid certain peers avoided an undesired task even temporarily so he didn't get into class right away for example and then some additional notes now if you have the questions set up appropriately uh, and they're easy to fill out then most of the time you wouldn't even need to write anything here but i put tom didn't want to come in from recess hid from the playground supervisor, took off his shoes, and threw them at Pierre Bob. We'll go submit, and, oh, oops, I forgot a pick duration. My mistake, four to 10 minutes. Okay, now we'll go submit. There we go, and that puts that information into a spreadsheet right here, so you can see. Now we'd be at the very bottom normally, but I added a bunch of fake data, so that's what happens. Each row is one behavior event. Um, I also set it up where it sends an email automatically that looks something like this. So hi, and I have the administrator names. This is a quick notification that supervisor has submitted an office referral for student in grade. Uh, check to see if they're unsure of the name or grade. So that way as an administrator, I can say, okay, they know what's up. If they don't know this person, then I can go in to make sure the data is correct. Gives me all the information about the event. So now if they're sent to the office, I know why they're here. And we are ready to have a dialogue about this. Um, I can have a conversation. I can come up with some other consequence. And I can reply or forward this message to the sending person and to their teachers, just to make sure everyone's in the know. Uh, if they did check off that unsure of name or grade, I can click here to edit the response. And that will open up a spreadsheet or the form again sorry and I can change the grade oh actually this student's in grade three so then I'm going to change that to grade three and go submit and that's uh, of that previously filled form so um, that also goes to a website here this is a hidden website only uh, myself and the administrators can see it if somebody were to type in the uh, web address it would just come up blank or it would give an error saying you need access so here it gives us a breakdown of all the behavior data of everything that's going on so duration um, triggers behavior and it gives you an idea of how you want to do your universal interventions i might say oh what's going on with grade four there's a lot of grade four students here so i can look at this and i can say okay is it just a few 
um, students or is it a wide gamut of just many, a few incidents for many students or many incidents for a few students? Uh, where is it happening? Do we need to change our supervision schedule? Do we need to stagger the transition for recess? Um, what types of behavior are we dealing with? So do we want to have a classroom lesson or a school-wide type of approach? What's interesting with this setup as well is I can look at one student. So let's look at ZYRU. His name is big. That means there's a lot there. So I'm going to go to students initials codes and look at ZYRU. So this is a grade four student with seven responses. What's happening here? So now I can look at this data. This is really helpful for behavior planning, um, program planning, and for say if you had a behavior goal as part of an IPP meeting. So what types of behavior disrespectful language is a big problem. So maybe that's how we want to uh, teach a replacement behavior for that specific um, problem behavior. So uh, that gives you, and you can do multiple grades too. So if I wanted to look at junior high and it was a junior high school, I could click 789 and look at just that grade. So this is really helpful for PLCs, small groups, or universal interventions. Going back to the spreadsheet, you can also see here I can filter the data. And if I wanted to get a print-off report of just that one student, student initials here, I can do that. So now it just gives me only this student. And I can print that off, or I can uh, send it off as a PDF. And then I can go back to select all and go OK. Uh, this data collaboration page here gives me a breakdown of each grade and the incidences that are happening in each grade. This gives me a breakdown of the uh, how many referrals per month. Um, it cancels out zeros, so you're not going to get a skewed number because of that. You put the student population in the school, and that uses that number to see how many students have zero or one, how many have two to five, and how many have five or more, which creates this lovely pyramid of intervention, which will be automatically updated on the fly. Again, this is a Google Sheet. Only the administrators can see the sheet. One question I had when I implemented the system was, can I have each, can I see my grades worth of data? Because then I can talk at a PLC meeting um, about particular student behavior, and then I can uh, reflect on that, and we can create planning. Say if a classroom supervisor submits a behavior log for a student, I wouldn't see it otherwise. So here, um, I created one spreadsheet for each grade, and using a specific formula here, um, it only gives me the most it only gives me the grade four in this case. Um, so it says, in a long story short, uh, give me all of the data where under the grade column it equals four. So it gives me all the grade four data. And uh, starting with the most recent first, this is a great way to reflect on it. And you can do the same filtering rules as you did beforehand in the main sheet. Um, so in this one, I could share this sheet and only share it with the teachers who teach in grade four as long and the administrators you can also use this for um, a specific student so i had a, an ea who was working one-to-one -one with a student um, or i had a consultant who came in um, from without the from outside the division i can create a spreadsheet which gives me all of that data for just where the student's name is the name of that individual person so you can really get um, a nice way to filter that information here. And because of the explore feature, it can even give you some automatic graphs of what's going on. So I can do count of location just in grade four, and then I can just publish that as a sheet. And I have that information right away. So there's a lot of really neat things you can do with this. So in another uh, video, I'll show a little bit more of how I made all of this and how it works in the background. But I just wanted to make this quick video to show how you can use a simple system um, to get really good quality data for ongoing decision making. Uh, this has been really helpful for creating referrals for psychoeducational assessments or consultants because all they have to do is um, get the one student uh, on this page and on the um, logs and that's print that off and that could be just attached to the referral so it's really quick and easy uh, we found that older systems where um say one of the video or one of the sub systems used was uh word documents on a network drive and each student had a document um students other students names were put on the document compromising privacy and um, a lot of staff just didn't do it so this is a really good system for increasing the amount of data so therefore you can make good decisions on it.
Thanks for watching, and I uh, hope you appreciate it. Bye now.